Hello everyone, and welcome to this AstroPy tutorial. My name is Micah, and in this video, we will go over performing aperture photometry using the photutils.aperture package. Aperture photometry is a valuable technique for quantifying the brightness of stars by analyzing the electromagnetic flux within designated apertures. In the last video, we went over detecting stars in a FITS image using the DAO Starfinder, and then identified the apertures to be employed for flux measurement. In this tutorial, we will delve deeper into the following topics. Measuring the flux through a designated aperture for each star. Determining the background noise by drawing an annulus around each star. Finding the zero point and exposure time of your FITS image to establish a reliable reference for measurements. And then, using these measurements, we will go over calculating the brightness of stars in your FITS image, expressed in magnitudes. Okay, so we're back in our Jupyter Notebook coding space, and as you can see here, we've got the image from last time where we actually already defined our apertures, and these are what we'll use to uh, measure the flux of these stars. So basically, what we're going to have the computer do is it's going to look at each of these circles, and it's just going to add up all the values inside of them. And so if I actually go here and print uh, apertures, that's the variable we defined, then we can see that this has all of the data. So it has our apertures, which is circular aperture, and it gives the positions and all the coordinates of each of those stars, and then a radius of five, because that's what we set the apertures to. Uh, so we already have our apertures, and that's the first step to performing aperture photometry. But what we have to do now is make an annulus around each star. And an annulus is basically a disc that has an inner and an outer radius, and we need that because we want to measure the brightness around each of the stars because we need to figure out what the background noise is like. So let's start coding that. So let's do from aperture import circular annulus circular Aperture. We probably already have that one imported from last time, but it doesn't hurt to bring it back in. And aperture stats. And then finally, aperture underscore photometry. Okay, so to define the annuluses, we're going to go annulus aperture equals circular annulus, and then in parentheses, positions. And if you remember, we defined positions in the last video, so we should already have that data there. Positions, radius inner, or r underscore in, so the inner radius is going to equal 10 pixels, and the outer radius, r out, is going to equal 15 pixels. Okay, so now let's plot this to see what that looks like. So do plt.figure. PLT dot M show section one C map equals grays norm equals log norm open close parentheses origin equals lower and then apertures dot plot color equals blue line width equals 1.5 and the alpha or the opacity equals 0.5 okay so that's just going to plot our apertures again and then we also want to plot the annuli so we'll do annulus underscore apertures or sorry annulus underscore aperture dot plot color and uh, let's set these ones to green that way we'll be able to tell them apart from the apertures. And again, we'll do a line width of 1.5 and a, an opacity of 0 0.5. Don't forget the semicolon there. And then plt.show. We run this. Uh, got a typo right there. So we run this again. All right, great. Now we can see here, we've got the blue apertures around each star and we've got the green annuli. And like I said, it's a disc. So we got the inner radius and the outer radius. And so that's measuring the brightness or the flux 
in between those two green lines. And so that's how it's getting the background measurement. So next, we actually have to uh, tell it to do that. So we have to define our background. We're gonna go ahead and do aperture stats equals aperture stats section one. Oh, and also you can see it remembered our mask there. So that's good because we didn't want we didn't want to get these portions messing up our data. Okay, so section one, and then comma, annulus underscore aperture. And then we'll set BKG underscore mean, or background mean to aperstats dot mean. Aperture area equals apertures dot area underscore overlap section one in parentheses and then total background or total bkg is going to equal bkg underscore mean times aperture area so let's set star data equal to aperture underscore photometry section one apertures and then star data so this creates a table here and so we're going to define some of the columns of this table star data and then the column total bkg is going to equal total bkg and then we'll format this real quick so for col in star data dot call names star data call dot info dot format equals percent dot eight G percent dot eight G. Okay. And then we'll, uh, we'll do a P print. So star data dot P print. All right. So we see this table that it created. Um, so again, it shows the ID of each star, 1 through 328, and it gives the X pixel coordinates and the Y pixel coordinates, and then it shows our aperture sum and our total background. So we actually just performed the aperture photometry. So we could stop there, but typically we don't want to report the brightness of our stars in flux. Typically we want to report the brightness in orders of, orders of magnitude. So to find the magnitude of a star, we have to use this equation here. We have that the magnitude is equal to the zero point minus 2.5 times the log base 10 of the flux divided by the exposure time. So we have the flux, but we need to find now the zero point and the exposure time. So let's start with finding the zero point. Now the zero point is dependent on a few things. It depends on what instrument was used to capture your FITS image and what date was your FITS image taken on. Now all of the zero point information is cataloged by the Space Telescope Science Institute and fortunately there is a tool we can use to search through that automatically. Uh, so we're going to have to install the ACS tools module. So in your terminal do pip install ACS tools and then when that's done we can go back to our code. And from ACS tools, we're going to import ACS ZPT or ACS zero point. Now, uh, like I said, this depends on a few things, the date, the instrument, and actually we'll also need to find the filter used. Now, all of this information can be found in the header document of our FITS file. And to access that, we go back into the terminal and we're going to type more M-O-R-E space and then the name of your FITS file. So for me, ngc1261.fits. And don't be concerned if this takes a while to open, the header is quite a large document, but once it does, as we can see here, we're greeted with a very messy, messy uh, group of text. Um, so it is a little annoying to look through, but you should be able to find all of your information here. So looking, I can see that my instrument is the WFC. My filter is the F814W or F814 wide filter. 
and the date is 2006, March 10th. So once you find those three pieces of information, go back into your code, and we're gonna write those down. So we'll write down our date, which is 2006, uh, dash zero three dash ten and then our instrument is the WFC and our filter is the F eight one four W then once you have those Type in Q equals ACS ZPT dot query, and then in parentheses date equals date, detector equals instrument, and then type ZPT underscore table, and set that equal to Q dot fetch, open close parentheses, and then Q underscore filter. And that equals ACS ZPT dot query. Oh. ACS ZPT dot query. And then in parentheses, our date equals date, detector equals instrument, and FILT equals filter. All right, and then lastly, type filter underscore ZPT equals Q underscore filter dot fetch open close parentheses, and now let's go ahead and print that. Print filter underscore ZPT, and let's run that. So here we see that we have our filter, the F814 wide, and then it shows us the ST mag, the Vega mag, and the AB mag, and the AB mag is the one we want. So 25.948, this number here, that is our zero point. So let's write that down here, our zero point, equals 25.9948, if I can type. And then there's one more thing we need to find. We need to find our exposure time, and that is also found in the header document. So let's open that back up. And we see that our exposure time is right here in the middle, and it's 1800 seconds, or just 1800. So we'll set our exposure time to 1800. And now we will actually write our equation. So first thing we're gonna to need to do is import math so that we can use the uh, logarithmic function. And then we'll set an empty list called magnitudes. And then for line in star data, and star data is our, uh, our big table that we defined earlier. For line in star data, we will have magnitudes.append 0 0.5 times math.log math.log 10 of the absolute value of line 3 which is our magnitude minus line 4 which is our background radiation and then go over one one parenthesis and then type forward slash exposure time and that'll divide it all by our exposure time uh, or it'll, it'll divide the uh, aperture minus the background by our exposure time. Okay, so that's our equation right there. So then what we can do is we'll define a new column in star data. We'll call it star data uh, magnitude. And that's going to equal magnitudes. And then we'll have it print that. So we'll do star data dot p print, and then we're gonna have to put a few things in the parameters here so that it'll print all the lines because it's like 328 lines and Python doesn't want to print all 328 lines if it doesn't have to, but we'll set max lines equal to negative one. So that just tells Python to print as many lines as it takes. And we'll do the same thing with our max width. We'll set that equal to negative one. So we run this and then boom, we have all of our data here. Uh, well, you will see that it says the output is truncated, so it still doesn't want to print it all out here but it gives us the option to open it in a text editor. So we can do that. And then here we have all of our data in a text editor. And we see we have the ID, the X coordinates, and the Y coordinates, the aperture sum, the total background, and finally our magnitudes. And it's all here in a text file ready to be saved and shared with the world. Well, thank you all so much for watching and congratulations on making it to the very end. 
Now I'm starting school back up in a few weeks, so this will have to be my last video for a while, but I hope these tutorials were able to help you in your research or classwork. Now as always, the code from this video is on my GitHub page, and I'll include a link to that in the description. But if you found any of my videos helpful, please uh, leave a like or a comment. It, it really means a lot to me to know that I'm helping someone. So again, thanks for watching, and I will see you all later.